Hello everybody, this is Thomas Wong II with reallifetrading.com and today I'm going to be doing a review of a platform that I have been using to generate some passive income and invest into private real estate. Today I'm talking about Fundrise.com. This is a crowdsourced real estate investing platform that pools together investment capital and invests into private real estate deals. This could be anywhere from apartments to uh, commercial real estate or even a single family home. Let's go ahead and dive into a little bit of the platform. So on the front page of fundrise.com, we have uh, 150K active investors, 5.1 billion in total assets transacted. Now this does include real estate deals that have closed and they've since liquidated. Um, so thus transaction value and they've had a hundred million dollars of dividends earned by their investors this is as of february 16th 2021 so why would someone want to invest into private real estate well historically we've seen general higher annual income and lower volatility over the past 20 years and this has held true even in the past few years uh, as i've been an investor with Fundrise and been able to see with real estate that I've held privately in my name, um, you don't get the typical markdowns that you see with the public markets. Any publicly traded real estate investment trusts, most of them have had a precipitous decline uh, amidst the COVID crisis. And some of them have recovered and continued on to new highs. Uh, some REITs have not. So that's something that you don't necessarily see when you have private real estate. Let's take a look at how much it takes to get started with Fundrise. So over here on the investments page of the website, we can see that the starter plan has an initial investment as low as $10. I believe when I started a few years ago, the minimum investment was $500, um, but uh, they've since lowered that even more. Um, now that first, $5,000, so anything up until you hit that core uh, portfolio tier, um, they invest the money, they being Fundrise, invest the money for you into their different REITs um, and they will diversify it. Um, based off of a questionnaire, I think your goals either is something for retirement, do you want uh, extra income, uh, are you looking for you know just pure growth, uh, do you want balance between the two? Um, based off of that little um, questionnaire, they will invest that first $5,000 amidst their uh, REIT offerings for you. After that $5,000 investment, that's when you get to directly allocate funds into whichever REIT you choose. Also on this page are the fees associated with Fundrise. So they have an annual advisory fee of 0.15%, which you can get waived via the link in the description below or referral code and that will waive the advisory fees for 90 days. And then there's also an annual asset management fee of up to 0.85%. Now that might seem high thinking, um, you know, seeing that there's 1% of a total in fees, but you have to remember whenever you invest into a REIT, whether um, it's a publicly traded one or a private one, they are going to have their own operating expenses that uh, are going to come up, uh, come off the top, right? So you're going to be getting the the dividends that they pay out. Um, that's all going to be less their their fees, right? If you want more information on their fees, you can actually look at an article that I will link in the description below uh, as to why Fundrise um, charges the fees that they do and how they compare to some other REITs and trusts. Moving on to the investment offerings that Fundrise has. Uh, this page can be found at fundrise.com slash offerings. And this page shows you all the different e-REITs that are available to invest your money into. Um, you'll notice that they categorize them based off of their objective, either income focused, balanced or growth focused, and also by geographic location. So some of them are nationwide, some of them have uh, certain areas that they focus on, such as the East Coast or the West Coast, and um, all of them pay out uh, quarterly dividends. 
If you click on the view details section on any of these tiles, it'll take you to that particular eReits investment page where you can see more details about the fund itself. This is one of the investment pages for an income eReit. So you can see that um, they have the number of projects that they're currently invested in, when the eReit was started, what phase they deem that it's in. Um, as far as the phase goes, a lot of these REITs, they will have turnover in terms of uh, what projects they are invested in. So it'll oscillate through various phases of ramping up, being stable, and um, just producing. This income e-REIT, uh, their objective is cash flow, and you can see the uh, net asset value as well as the current projected dividend. This is just a projected dividend and it will vary depending on how the underlying investments go. Uh, I have seen some investments uh, either get paid back early, um, so that truncates some of the investment horizon in some of the, some of the deals. Um, so that's something just to be aware of. So here you get a nice overview of what they're trying to invest into. And further down, you get to see some of the historical performance, um, as well as the dividends on the investment and your actual uh, returns uh, per quarter and per month. Uh, continuing further down, we have the actual different projects that the fund is invested into. So we've, um, in particular, this one, they're all apartment developments. Um, you can see this tile view where they can you can either take a quick view into each of the investments themselves. It tells you what strategy they're focused on, uh, the size of the investment. And if you click over here on this tile here, then you can actually switch to a map view and you can see um, just with dots where the investments are located in the United States. Jumping over to a, another eReads here, this is the East Coast eReads. You can see that there's 11 active projects and you can kind of see with this uh, little pie chart here, they have uh, different types of investments into this eReads. So if we scroll down um, again, you can see the historical returns. And if you scroll further down, they actually will tell you the different strategy that they are focusing on. So Fundrise also has an article explaining each of these strategies. Uh, fixed income or fixed income like is the generally the most stable uh, type of investment that just simply produces income. Core plus is kind of like a cash flowing real estate property that's stabilized and is just producing income. They're just holding it for a certain period. Uh, the value add is when there's um, renovations typically going on or they're turning around a different project. And opportunistic is usually um, the most risky where they're um, building something out and they have uh, straight equity positions. So they're looking for really the growth um, in the underlying asset. I did want to cover one other investment option that Fundrise has, and this is the Interval Fund. This is aggregated under a different um, part of the tax code. So this is still crowdfunded, but it's under a different uh, regulation offering. So there is, um, for the Reg A+, which most of the e-REITs are organized under, there's a now $75 million limit uh, to, those, to the funds in that investment. That's why there's so many different e-REITs. Uh, the real estate interval fund is organized under a different um, section of the tax code. And so they can actually raise more capital into this fund itself. So uh, this is uh, something they actually give a little bit of a blurb here, what the fund is trying to invest in and how it's part of a different um, internal revenue code. And you can actually look at the different fund holdings here too. They have um, lots of uh, single family, homes, apartments. Um, this is also majority in this uh, southeastern uh, region of the United States where they're mainly doing the investments. So this is another uh, option that investors have with Fundrise. The current investment minimums, I believe, for the interval fund are $1,000 and follow-on investments are as low as 
uh, the net asset value for one share. So you are, are not buying in fractions of a share unless I believe unless you're reinvesting the dividends. There's also no liquidity penalty for this investment. Uh, normally with all of the other REITs, if you have your investment uh, in Fundrise for less than five years, I believe it is, they actually penalize you with a 1% redemption fee. All right, so if you click on any of the project investment tiles from the eReit page, uh, you get to see a little bit of an in-depth look on the actual investment itself. And so I'm gonna take you through this one. This is actually a completed project that was in um, Georgia. This is the Mosby Lakeside Apartments. And uh, we'll see how you get updates uh, as this project uh, progressed. All right, so the strategy was a fixed income type strategy. They invested just over seven and a half million dollars. Right, and this was one of the original sketches that they had for the project. They actually give you a little bit of a market analysis, which is nice. So if you uh, want to see, this is one area that they're focusing investments in right now, the kind of what they dubbed is the Sunbelt region. And so here's the project timeline, right? So they acquired the project um, back in November, 2018. Um, each of these tiles here does have their own article. So if you want to read more in depth um, and you'll actually get email updates for each of these as they um, come out. So as you, new projects are acquired and as those projects update, you'll get these updates and uh, full, full articles about them. We're just going to go through high level on the timeline for this one here. So it's a 316 apartment unit development um, in the near Savannah, Georgia. And you can see that um, about a year later, uh, a little less than a year later, they had a progress update so they can see that construction was underway on the buildings. And just as a side note, um, I actually have been able to drive by, um, being in Southern California, I've been able to drive by some of the projects that are on the West Coast and actually see some of this, just like the, this uh, photo entails here, some of the building happening for those projects. So that's a little bit of a neat thing uh, that you can do. Um, sometimes these updates here will have drone videos, um, more pictures, but uh, this one just has uh, just static pictures. And um, that was that update. Again, they were looking at getting a 12% annual return for the duration of this investment. So moving forward to September in 2020, we have the completed construction photos on some of the buildings. This article talks about um, how they're beginning to lease out the apartments and the project owner would then look to secure some long-term financing. So they refinance the debt, get a balloon payment to pay off um, Fundrise so that the interest payments that they're pay they were paying to Fundrise would stop and they would just get their overall uh, investment return. And this happened uh, a few months later it was paid off and you get the final exit update where the Savannah area apartments pays back in full, generating roughly 15 and a half percent annualized return. So exceeding their expectations, um, there's a nice little win and overall took about three years, uh, actually a little bit less than three years. So they do project anywhere from three to five years, I think is the general that they kind of expect these projects to, to last at least this type of fixed income type project where it's um, they're looking for that exit as uh, the, the sponsor refinances. Um, so that's uh, one methodology that they have for some investments. Another unique thing about Fundrise is that they released this article about a portfolio stress test. This was back um, right as the shutdowns and lockdowns were occurring due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so this was published back in April of 2020. And so they performed a stress test on their overall real estate portfolio to see how bad things could potentially get. And just to show the public that they were not worried about their portfolio, that they were not worried about having to liquidate assets at the bottom um, just because they weren't going to meet debt obligations or anything like that. So 
overall, they were very secure in their portfolio, um, being able to hold on to their real estate and ride out any downturns, ideally, as um, if if people were investing in real estate back in 2008 <clears throat> and you were able to hold on to your property, you were able to, for the most part, were able to reap the benefits um, of being able to hold on. And come now, uh, most real estate is, is higher. All right, so let's dive into the stress test a little bit. Uh, we're just gonna hit some of the highlights and I will link this uh, stress test in the description below as well if you want to do a detailed review yourself. So back uh, when they released this stress test, they had $1.1 billion in assets under management and $175 million in cash and liquid, liquid reserves. So, um, what they did was they took a look at what their current uh, DSCRs are, debt service coverage ratio, also what their current loan to values were on um, other properties, and they compared them each different type of real estate asset class to conditions that were um, pretty bad, as we'll, we'll find out. So moving on down in this article, uh, we're going to take a look at this section right here where they're talking about the debt service coverage ratio. So before we saw that overall their apartments had a debt DSCR of about 1.87. That basically means that if they needed $100,000 of debt service each year, their actual portfolio of apartments is bringing in $187,000 uh, currently, right? So what they did was they stress tested it to a a level that was uh, about three times as bad as the peak vacancy during the Great Recession, right? So they're looking at an economic vacancy of 32% versus during the Great Recession. At the very peak, the uh, nationwide vacancy was 11.1%. So they did something worse than the Great Recession and said, here's how our portfolio would hold up, right? And so they actually list all of their 25 properties that this um, type of asset entails. And they tell you what their stressed DSCR is um, and what they are currently. So it's a nice little, um, it was a nice little stress test to see that even with very severe conditions, their properties would uh, be in fact okay, right? So this is gets down to a total weighted average of 1.03. So even with something that's almost three times as worse as the Great Recession, their apartments would be able to meet all of their debt service obligations and probably renegotiate them as well. The rest of this article goes through the different types of real estate properties and their stress tests that they used for them. And overall, um, this portfolio holds up pretty, pretty well. Again, link in the description below if you want to, and I think you should go through this uh, in more detail yourself. All right, and one of the last things we're gonna touch on are the actual client performances over time. So this is kind of uh, new that Fundrise has published the track record and they put a dot uh, on this chart here for each um, client account that they have. You can kind of see that over time, between one, two, three, four, five, and six years um, of investments, how those client returns have done over over the past six years. So it's a pretty, pretty interesting uh, graphic there. You can see that definitely the longer that you hold it, generally the better uh, annualized return you get over time. And further down here, we can actually see some comparison to other investment types. So public REITs and public stocks. You can see that Fundrise delivers their returns with much less volatility. To me, that's definitely, uh, I think, what investors into Fundrise would be looking for. They're looking for a little bit of stability in their portfolios. They're looking at, at investing into um, a sector that maybe they don't have exposure to because they're mainly invested into 
publicly traded stocks or publicly traded REITs at the moment. Um, and this is just one way to add stability to a portfolio and generate a higher than average uh, return, income return. You can kind of see down here, the income return 5.86% is actually a little bit low than what they've done in previous years. Um, looking at my own historical performance, it is a little bit lower, probably a um, projection of the current interest rate environment um, on that um, timeline progress of so the projects we went through. You can see that it only lasted about three years, um, whereas you know some of the projects they would have expected to last five years and it, and be paying out interest for another two years. Some things are getting refinanced early, so that's probably why currently you have a little bit of a lower income return for some of those projects. All in all, it's still a higher than um, some public REITs without the volatility. Um, and also much higher than public stocks as well. Again, without as much volatility. Um, do I think Fundrise is a place where you're going to um, have huge home runs or you're gonna make um, $50,000 on a house flip? It's definitely not the type of real estate investment that Fundrise typically does. They are a platform geared more towards um, long-term growth or supplemental income. So those are kind of their viewpoints. And again, they do discourage you from uh, taking your money out um, less than five years. So definitely, I would say invest money into Fundrise that you're not looking at touching for a little while and just letting those um, returns compound. One other thing I did want to uh, touch on Dividends, you can either have them reinvested or you can just have them paid out to you and then you can decide where or how you want to spend those dividends, where you want to reinvest them or if you just want to spend them yourself. That wraps up my review of Fundrise. Again, I think this is something that an investor would use with capital that they're looking to appreciate on a longer term basis. They're not looking to get some sweat equity out of, right? If you invest in real estate on your own, Generally, you're gonna have some sort of sweat equity where you're doing a little bit of a rehab renovation, there's a flip involved, or there's a leverage involved with um, some debt. You don't get that for Fundrise. Um, this is just more of a passive investment, I think akin to public REITs, except with a little bit of a different structure, right? There's less volatility, also less liquid. Um, so there's pros and cons uh, to the investment, but decide where you're at personally and what you want to get out of your investment dollars. And if you're looking for a little bit of stability in your portfolio, maybe Fundrise is right for you. So thanks everybody for um, watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe and to visit reallifetrading.com to see all of our free courses on how to trade the stock market. Thanks everybody, have a good day.